All right, so let's start by creating a new class in BlueJ. Um, and we're just going to call this notes. And this will just be a collection of static methods that we use um, to introduce the syntax for decisions. We're going to start with if statements. So I'm going to put my name here so I remember that I wrote it in today's date so I know when we started. And I'll get rid of everything other than public class notes in the curly brackets. So there, we're going to learn a few different types of decision structures in Java. And for each one where applicable, I'm going to compare and contrast it to Python, because I think that's going to help you make the transition. Um, but also, if you're familiar with any C-based languages, these are very similar as well. Um, but let's start by, we're going to like flip a coin. And we're going to make one be heads and zero be tails, so we have something to ask a question about. An if statement is asking a question. Um, and it's a question that has to evaluate to either true or false. So we're going to model a coin flip. And for our coin flip, one is going to be heads and zero is going to be tails. One thing that I'm going to keep reinforcing throughout this unit, and actually the entire year, is using the math.random class to generate random integer values. We first saw this in the previous unit. But I'm going to have a local variable of type int called coin flip. And I'm going to use math.random and cast it to an int like we learned in the last unit. So math.random returns a double between 0 inclusive and 1 exclusive. So if I multiply it by 2 and then cast it to an int, I'm always going to get either 0 or 1 with equal probability. So now we have coin flip will either have a value of 0 or 1. We have something we can ask a question about. Okay. So we're going to start off typing the if statement, and then we're going to add some comments to explain the syntax and the different parts and how we refer to them and, and the rules about it. So we're going to say if, and then in parentheses, we ask the question. And the question is going to be coin flip is equal to 1. So if the coin flip is equal to 1, we're going to just print a message. System.out, out.println, coin is heads. We're excited about heads. We want heads. There we go. What did I forget here? Oh, we need to write a method. I'm <laughs> like, what is going on? All right, sorry. Public static void if example. Let's put all of that code in a method. Now my indentation is all messed up. You can always go to the edit menu and choose auto layout which is also Shift-Command-I on the Mac or Shift-Control-I on Windows, and it'll clean up all your indentation for you as well. All right, that's much better. So this is how we ask a question in a Java program. If coin flip is equal to 1. So the double equal sign is the equality operator. In my head, when I read code, I replace the double equal sign with is equal to. Um, and that helps me like read the code in a more natural way. So this is our first decision type statement. This is called an if statement. And with an if statement, the statements are executed if the conditional expression is true. And I'll explain in just a moment here, we'll explain what do we mean by statements and what do we mean by conditional expression. So we're going to break down this little example into each of the important parts. OK, so what is a conditional expression? Well, a conditional expression, eval conditional expressions evaluate, eva conditional expressions evaluate to either true or false. A conditional expression can be arbitrarily complicated 
as long as when that expression is evaluated by the Java runtime, the result is a Boolean value. The result is true or the result is false. The conditional expression is the part inside the parentheses. So the conditional expression must go inside of parentheses. Okay? That is a change from Python, right? We don't need parentheses after the if statement in Python. Okay? So there's one change. We've got to put parentheses there after the if statement. All right, so that's the conditional expression part. That evaluates to true or false. Um, the other part of the statements, this is our statement here, the print statement. So statements are grouped by blocks, by code blocks. What I mean by a block are the curly bracket things. They define a block of code. So if this conditional expression is true, this entire block of code will be executed. They are not determined by indentation like in Python. So in Python, we indent after the if statement to show that these are the statements that run if the condition is true. In Java, it's solely defined by this code block, the curly brackets. In general, curly brackets. We'll see kind of an exception in, in a moment. One other difference from Python is there is no colon after the conditional expression, unlike Python. So syntactically, this can take a little bit getting used to. Um, have to have a conditional expression. That's true of, of all programming languages. In Java, we put it in parentheses. We do not put a colon here. And then the statements we want associated with that if statement are in curly brackets below. So if we were to run this program, if coin flip had a value of one, it would print coin as heads, and otherwise it would print nothing. So that's the that's our this is our first example of asking. Um, a question in our code and being able to conditionally do something based on the answer. This gives us a lot of new power that we didn't have before. All right, one little side note, because you're certainly going to see this, um, and I don't want you to be confused by it. Um, so here's a little side note, and we'll do an example as well. The curly brackets for the statement block, they are not required. Um, for a single statement, if we just have one statement. However, they are always a good idea. Please use them. They are free. They don't cost anything. Leaving them out can lead to bugs like this. So unfortunately, this is what I observe when programmers don't like using curly brackets. So let's ask a different question. Let's say if coin flip equals equals is equal to zero, let's just do the indent and not the curly bracket and print coin is tails. But like I said, we really want heads. So we're not happy if coin is tails. So we're going to like console whoever runs our program and say, better luck next time. So run this program several times and see what is printed.
So I'm going to run this so we can all see it. So if I run it, I might get, huh, coin is heads. Better luck next time. Getting a lot of heads, but it still says better luck, but I got heads, which is odd. Coin is tails. Better luck next time. No matter what I get, it always prints better luck next time. And the reason for that is only this statement is included as part of the if. Okay? Java does the Java compiler doesn't care about our indentation. This code has the intention, it appears, of grouping these two statements together such that they're only executed if the coin flip is zero. But from Java's perspective, it's as if we wrote it like this. Okay? So just watch out for that. Or even better yet, like use curly brackets. They don't cost anything. But I'm going to leave this here as an example of, of a bug that I do see if people leave out curly brackets. If we have multiple questions to ask, for example, like if the coin is heads, then we're going to print one thing. And then if the coin is tails, we're going to print another thing. Then those two questions should be grouped into a single if else <coughs> statement. Okay. Um, if the questions are unrelated, it's fine to have two independent if statements. But if the question is related, we want them as part of the same if else statement because otherwise each if statement is evaluated independently. And in more complicated examples, both and may end up being true. And if we want an either or thing, then we don't want both to be true. So here's how we do. Um, so what is that called? It's called an if else statement. It works out pretty well. So an if else statement, the only new thing here is that the else block is executed if the condition evaluates to false. And here's the syntax for, for that. So if coin flip is equal to 1, I'm going to actually copy the print stuff here so I don't have to keep retyping it. And then we just do else. And I'm going to copy this print stuff too. So if the coin flip is equal to 1, print coin as heads. Else, print coin as tails. That reads pretty well, which is nice. So again, if the questions are related, put them in the same condition or in the same if-else statement. Um, if they're not related, of course, have independent ifs. Uh, but if they're related, they should be part of an if-else. In the case of a coin, we just care about heads or tails. However, at times, um, we might have more than two options that we want to check. So we can actually ask multiple related questions all as part of the same big um, what's called in. So another, this is called an if, else if, else statement. So just again, to compare and contrast with Python in Java, Else if, two separate words separated by a, state, a space, is used instead of elif, like Python. Okay. Personally, I like, this is one of those rare cases where I like the Java syntax better. I think else if reads better. Um, it's harder for whoever wrote the Java parser and compiler to deal with else if compared to elif. Um, but kudos to the Java compiler writers for figuring that out. Um, so we need something that can do an, uh, a statement like this. So actually, before this comment, let's generate, let's model a four-sided die. So model the role of a four-sided die, meaning I want values 1 through 4 inclusive of both 1 and 4. So we'll create a local variable called die roll, and we're going to keep using math.random. Okay, math at random returns a value from 0 inclusive to 1 exclusive, 
I'll multiply it by 4 and cast it to an int. So now I'll have an integer between 0 inclusive and 3 inclusive. If I add 1 to that, I'll have a value between 1 and 4 inclusive. We're going to keep using this, this code snippet over and over and over and over and over again. All right, so if we want to print different messages for each roll of the die, we can do it with an if else if else statement. So we could do if die roll, oops, die roll is equal to one. I'm going to print roll to one. I'm going to copy this block because we're going to use it similar to it. And then I do else if, and with the else if, there's another pair of parentheses with another condition to evaluate. Die roll is equal to 2. Roll to 2. Else if die roll is equal to 3. Roll to 3. And I could do another else if for the 4, um, but that's all that's left, so it's fine and perhaps a little bit more reasonable just to do an else for the case of the four. So feel free to run this method several times. See what different values you get for your roll of the four-sided die. Here's the, um, yeah. Oh. One thing that we struggle with as, as we're thinking through this, and this showed up in the previous unit as well, is we tend to look at a piece of code like all of this holistically, um, and we forget that that's not what the Java runtime does. The Java runtime looks at it one piece at a time. So this is where that tracing technique can be important. If you look just at the like first condition here, if you just focus on if die roll equals one, if that's true, we're going to print roll to one, and then none of this code will be executed. None of it. It's all just skipped because this part here was already true. Okay. Now, if die roll is not equal to 1, we just look at the next expression. And we see if die roll is equal to 2. And if that is true, we'll print this. And then we'll skip the rest of this. We won't even look at it. So the order in which you structure your if else ifs is very important. Um, and the way you check that is by tracing through it one line at a time and not looking at it holistically. Okay? Um, so often if these are in a different order, the, for more complicated examples, um, it's not going to behave the way we, the way we expect. So. All right, so just to kind of see where we've been here, if, else, if, else, blocks. Just so you're aware, we can totally put if statements or if else statements or if else if else statements um, inside of another if statement. We can nest our conditionals, right? Because what goes between those curly brackets is whatever arbitrary code we want. Um, so we can have several levels of if statements if needed. Um, here's all the operators. 
on the screen here. The double equal sign is the equality operator. If we want to check if something is not equal to something else, the not equal to operator is the exclamation point in the equal sign. Um, less than is familiar from mathematics. Um, greater than is familiar from mathematics. Less than or equal to, we, it's not a single character, it's two characters. So it's the less than followed by the equal to. Order matters, um, so keep, keep that in mind. If on a written exam you write less than or equal to like you would like in math, that's totally okay. Um, but when you type it, you got to type it as two separate characters. Greater than or equal to, um, similarly uh, greater than and then the equal to sign. So a lot of this is what you're, you're familiar with. Really the not equal and the e equality are really the only two new symbols. But they're consistent between Python and other C-based languages as, as well.